Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for children. Man, they are the future. Some of us are getting old and getting old faster. And we say, what's going to happen to the church? Well, that's, it just went back there in that back room. That's what's going to happen to the church. So you better pray. Good. At least takes care of them kids back there. Teaches them the right thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, they got it now. now. We don't have to worry about them. <laughs> yeah. Some of you remember the, uh, most of us, I guess, remember the story of uh, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And if you remember in the one scene, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge is waking from a dream, and he looks up and he sees the ghost of his partner, Jacob Marley. And Jacob appears to him at the foot of his bed and Ebenezer springs to his, springs up, doesn't actually get to his feet, I think, according to the book, but he kind of springs up and he sees him and he says, well, you're chained. You're chained. Tell me. Tell me why you're chained. And Jacob Marley says, I wear the chain I forged in my life. I made it link by link, foot by foot. I girded it on of my own free will, and of my own free will I wear it. Did you think about that? Let that sink in for a minute. The chain that I wear is the chain that I forged one link at a time one inch, one foot at a time. And I put it on willingly. And I willingly continue to wear it. Choices. Choices. The, the power of making choices. For the next several weeks, we're going to talk about the power in making good choices. We're going to talk about making good choices in our finances. We're going to talk about making good choices in our marriage and our relationships. We're going to talk about making good choices in life in general. We're going to talk a lot about choices. And this morning I'm going to spend some time hopefully making you aware. You can go to that next slide, Roger. I'm sorry. Hopefully making you aware of the power of choices. The power of choices. When Ronald Reagan was a very young man, his aunt came to him and said, I want to take you downtown and get you a pair of shoes made. And they went downtown. In those days, it was a cobbler. And we don't know much about that anymore. But the cobbler would ask, would measure you. And, and then he would ask you what kind of so shoes you'd like and how you would like them to fit. And he would make the shoes. And so young Ronald Reagan sat there and said, uh, was sitting there, and the cobbler said, well, young man, would you like square toes or round toes? And after thinking about it, he said, I, I just don't know. I can't make my mind up. He said, can you give me a couple of days, and, and I'll think about it, and I'll let you know. And he said, that'll be fine. Well, a couple of days went by, and the cobbler saw... Ronald uh, on the street, on the sidewalk, and he said, have you made your mind up yet? And he said, no, sir. He said, I'm just not sure what I want, if I want round or square toes. And a couple of more days passed, and the cobbler again saw Mr. Reagan, the young Mr. Reagan, and he said, have you made your mind up? Do you want square toes or, or round toes? And he said, well, no, I just don't know. And uh, some days later, the cobbler sent over a pair of shoes to Mr. Reagan's house uh, via the, you know, uh, uh, errand boy. And he was all excited, and he opened them up and looked at them. And sure enough, one shoe was square, and one shoe was round. And Ronald Reagan kept those shoes all of his life. He said, why did he keep those shoes? Because he said, looking at these shoes every day reminds me that if you don't make a decision, somebody else will make it for you. If you don't make a choice, don't you worry about it. 
Somebody else will do it for you. Next slide, please. Probably a great, great, one of the greatest pictures in Scripture of making a choice is our man Moses in Hebrews eleven twenty four. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, and let me interpret that, when he got old enough to understand, when he, he grew to a maturity to understand, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, he looked to the reward. You see, Moses came of age. Moses matured enough that he could look at his circumstances and he could see them clearly. He understood who he was. He, he understood that he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter, that he was in line, if you will, for, to be the Pharaoh. He understood not only who he was, but he understood something greater. He understood who he could be. He saw that I can be the Pharaoh. But yet he made a choice after looking into the future to not be the Pharaoh. He took a long look. He saw the future of his direction. He, he, he saw that if I continue down this road, my God won't be pleased with me. And who knows what will happen to me. Who can even answer what can happen to me? He understood that the future wasn't in the stuff in Egypt. It says, choosing, uh, <clears throat> choosing the reproach of Christ as greater riches than the, the, you see that, treasures in Egypt, the stuff in Egypt, the tangible, the things that I can place my hand on now. I think that serving Christ is a better choice, and I'm going to move on in that direction because it's not about the stuff that I can get. Now let's talk and talk that about that just for a moment. Moment, excuse me. What kind of stuff? Well, man, he had all the gold you could want. He had a palace. He had everything you could want. He had horses. He had he had it all. Remember who he was. And he looked at that. He opened his closet door and saw that. Then he looked over here and he saw the riches in Christ. And he said, you know what? That stuff's good and it's fun, but I am think I'm going to go this direction. Your future. Your future is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. Oh, but you don't know how I was raised. I don't care how you were raised. You can choose to be different. I, I'm, I'm tired person. I've got a book on my, my bookshelf that says, it's not my fault. <laughs> well, I had to shoot her. I had to. We didn't have but one car. and it just, You know, I, I had to shoot her. It's not my fault. I had to do these. I had to make these choices. I grew up in, in poor circumstances. No. No. The world is full of choices, full, excuse me, full of heroes that have made choices. You see, a hero is not, a hero's not determined by his power. The hero is determined by how he uses his power. You know what? A lot of evil heroes out there because he chooses to do, not evil heroes, but evil people out there because he chooses to use their power wrong. It's all about what you choose to do with what God's given you. It's a choice. Next slide. Those who trust in their own insight are foolish. All right, let's just stop right there. This doesn't apply to anybody in this room, does it? Nobody? I didn't think so. We can move on? Yeah. Those who choose to do what they think is right, what they want to do, what looks good to them, what looks better to them, are, are kind of, you know, kind of, kind of not making it. Is that what it says? It says you're a fool. 
says you're a fool. But anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of like being safe. <laughs> if we want to be different, we have to make a commitment to do different. Let me tell you something. If you do the same thing next week that you did last week, don't expect this week to be any different than last week. Did you hear what I said? I want you to pay attention to that. If you do it and live exactly like you did last week, don't you expect this week to turn out better? What you, you get what you put into it. If you're going to do the right things, then, then, then you can make a, uh, if you're going to make a commitment to do something different, then, then you can be different. We have to choose who we want to be. And we have to make our choices to that end. Moses choose, choosed. <laughs> Moses chose who he wanted to be. And he made decisions to that end. Let me ask you something. And keep it to yourself. What kind of woman do you want to be? I, I didn't say what kind of woman do you think you can be. I want to know what kind of woman do you want to be. I don't want you to look at your circumstance. And the best I can hope for is this. What kind of man do you want to be? Not what kind of man do you think you can be. What kind of man do you really want to be? Don't, don't limit yourself by what, by what you think is, is the most you can ever accomplish. What do you really want to be? Choices can help you get there. That great troubadour singer that we all love and would have liked to have been, Michael Jackson. had a song. It says, I'm going to make a change for once in my life. I'm going to feel real good. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make it right. And you know the chorus probably. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Quit trying to change the people around you. Change you. Look in the mirror and say, I want to change. I see what I have done and, and where it's brought me to. I see that and, and it's time to make a change. Everyone on this planet was born to fulfill a God-given purpose. That means you, that means me. God didn't birth you by some, you just didn't get birthed and then some crazy thing, he doesn't know nothing about you, and doesn't have any plan for you. He didn't go, uh-oh, not her, not him, when you were born. Our personal fulfillment is only possible when we complete the destiny that God chose us for. And that destiny can only be fulfilled when we purpose to have our lives line up with the goal that He set forth in our life. And we will be held accountable for that. The day, the moment that you were, you were born, if you will, God said, I have a plan for that man. I have a plan for that woman. And he looked way ahead in time and he said, this is my desire for you. And he gave you all the equipment and all of the, all of the, the power that you need to fulfill it. You see, God's not like we think he is sometimes. God doesn't tell us as I would tell a two or three year old to go out and change the tire on my car and then laugh at him because he can't do it. That's not God. God doesn't send you somewhere and say, ha 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 ha, you're all stuck out there and you're, you, no, that ain't God. God puts something ahead of you. He, he gives you a destiny and he gives you all the power you need to fulfill that destiny. What kind of a God would do that? 
would send, excuse me, what kind of a God would send somebody out, give them a goal, give them a life, and, and look, show them what they could be, and then tell them, that's great, isn't it? But you can't do it. God loves you. Your life is not an accident. Get those two things. If you leave here with nothing else tonight, this morning, excuse me, get it in your mind. God loves you. You need to say that to yourself every now and then. You need to look in the mirror and say, wow, God loves me, and he has a destiny for me. I am not an accident. Now, I may have been living like an accident for 40 or 50 years, but I'm not one. Time to stop that kind of, uh, excuse me, that, that's a Greek term, means stinking thinking. Stop that. You will only fulfill your destiny when you put your hands into the designer of that destiny. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting thought? You can't fulfill your destiny until you place your hands in his, place your life into his hands. Next slide. Choices will give birth to our habits. Our habits will shape our character, and our character sets our destinies. I want you to think about that. Choices give birth to our habits. The easiest explanation for this is the choice that a person first makes, this might be the easiest way to grasp this, to, to become a drug to become a drug, we don't take a choice to become a drug addict. It takes a choice to choose drugs. The drugs take over that person's life, and their choices will form a habit. That habit, left to itself, will shape the character of that person, and then that's when we call them a drug addict. And that character, if not corrected, will set forever their destiny. You might be 20 or 50 years old, but that truth will always be there. Sean Covey says, we become what we repeatedly do. We become what we repeatedly do. Wrote a bad check, got away with it. Hey, I'll just write another one. Then I'll write another one and another one. And you know what you become after that? Become a fraud. We become what we pre repeatedly do. The flip side works too. I love people. I like to ha make them laugh. You know, I, I do. I love it. And I, I just don't go where I, I, I feel challenged when somebody comes up and says, can I help you? Yeah, I feel challenged. It's a personal challenge. <laughs> I'm going to repeatedly be a nice guy if I can. Okay? I, I, I'm not perfect. Some of y'all know me. I get mad just like everybody else does. I get frustrated just like everybody else does. But boy, I want the habit of my life to be one of Bible study and prayer. I want to repeatedly do those things because that's what I'll become. That's what I'll become. Maybe the best picture of choices and habits and character and destiny is found in the book of Daniel. Next slide. Daniel chapter 6. And Daniel learned that the law had been signed. What law? That law that said he could no longer pray to his God. He had to pray to Darius. He could no longer serve his God. If he was going to get ser if he was going to serve his God, he was going to get thrown into a den of lions. Let's put that in modern terms. Uh, if I came over to your house, I said, "That's it. You ever read your Bible again? I'm going to shoot you and kill you." For a lot of us, he'd say, "Here, take my Bible and don't worry about it." But that wasn't Daniel. When he learned that the law had been signed, he went home and cried. No, what? He went home and knelt down. Look at that word. As usual. 
You see, he had made up his mind. He had, he had some choices that he had made in life, and, and one of those choices was that every day he was going to pray. That was a choice. That choice had turned into a habit, and that's why it says, as usual. Da Daniel went home as usual in his upstairs room, opened his windows toward Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day. That's a choice. And look at this. Look, look, here's the habit. As he had always done. See, that's a habit. His choice had turned into a habit. Roy Disney said it's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. What? It's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. What do you value? What do you value? If you value being a godly man and a godly woman, guess what? Your decisions are going to reflect that. New Testament Scripture, Jesus said, you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. <laughs> you can watch somebody, I'm telling you. And, and Look, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, you used to say all the time there was, what, three things. One of them was your checkbook. Uh, the other was your Friday nights. And I can't remember what the other one was. But if, I, if, you, if you could open a person's checkbook, see what they do on Friday nights, and I can't remember what the other one, and what they do on Sunday mornings, you can know all you want to know about them. See, if you, you look at a checkbook and find out if somebody really loves people or loves themselves. You can open a checkbook and find out whether they give or not. You can look at what they do on Friday nights. What are they doing on Friday nights? So they're out gallivanting around and doing things. We all know what I'm talking about. Let's grow up. Nobody look at me and go, oh, he's one of them spitfire preachers. Oh, rah, rah. You know I'm telling you the truth. And what they do on Sunday mornings, you know an awful lot about a person. You know an awful lot about a little kid when he comes running. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and the book Alice in Wonderland. Yes, I'm going to quote from Alice in Wonderland. I figure if I could do Michael Jackson, I could do Alice in Wonderland. Somehow we could tie them all together. <laughs> Papa's gone. He's, he's out. <laughs> Alice comes upon the Cheshire, Cheshire cat. Ken, that's one of those words I have a hard time with. And she's confused and she's lost. And she says, Sir, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? That's a good question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, what way should you go from here? And the cat says something very wise. He said, well, it depends a good deal on where you want to go. <laughs> That's, a good question. That's a good answer. How do I get there? Well, it depends on where you want to go. I, I want to be this person, this, this thing, this godly woman. That will determine your direction. Now, listen to what she says. I, Alice says, well, I don't much care where I go. Wisdom of the cat. Then it doesn't matter which way you go because you'll get there sooner or later as long as you don't care where you're going don't worry you'll get there you'll get there soon enough you see if you decide to go with the flow then you'll end up where the flow goes and it's usually downhill and it often lead to a big pile of sludge. And in that sludge is a lot of unhappiness. You'll basically just end up what the world does, doing everything they do, acting like them, being like them, making excuses like they, like they make. Next slide. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For if he sows his flesh, of the flesh he'll reap corruption. But who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. 
I probably don't need to comment much on that, but it's, it's, it's a reality. You, 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 if you choose to do whatever it is you think you want to do, whether you know whatever lifestyle it is, uh, it doesn't matter because you're going to reap what you sow. The New Living Translation version says, "Don't be misled. You cannot mock God. You will always harvest what you plant." It's choices. What kind of a cho what choices do we gonna, are we going to make? What, how are we going to choose? What happens? Why are you where you are? Listen to me. There's nothing sadder in a person's life than when they get alone by themselves at some point in their life, they sit down in the chair all alone and they say, how did I get here? And why did I do that? Now, if you've never said that to yourself, you're lucky. I have many times. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Look at where I am. Look at how things turned out. Quit sitting down and looking around going, it's their fault. It's not their fault. It's your fault. You go back to the man in the mirror. Make changes. The Apostle Paul is very clear when he says the reason we discipline ourselves, it's not because of some drudgery that we have to do. It's because, according, going back to Hebrews chapter 11, it's because of an eternal reward. I don't like everything I'm going to shock you, okay? You ready? I don't like everything the Bible says. Whoa, whoa, what? You don't either, don't lie. I don't like everything it says, but I believe everything it says. You know, I don't like it because I'm like you are. I'm, I'm a fleshly person. There's things I'd like to do and like to try, but the, God says, no, I don't do that. I don't understand everything the Scripture says about my choices in life. How can it be that if I do that, that this will work out? Let me give you the biggest one that most people struggle with. How can it possibly be that if I look at my paycheck and I take 10% or more of it and I give it to God, how can it be that I can pay my bills? And because that doesn't make sense to us, so many of us won't do it. And yet, God calls us to. Got quiet. Guys, that's choice. That's a choice. Nobody's going to come. I'm not coming over to your house every Sunday morning driving around everybody's house going, did you back out your tithe check? <laughs> I ain't doing that. Let me tell you what I think is amazing. God made tithing so easy. 10%. Think about that. A little kid can figure out what 10% of a dollar is. Now, if you're really smart, you mess them up and say, well, that's 50 cents. <laughs> and when they start making a lot of money, they're giving half, and they know, man, God really blessing them then. You made $341.27. You owe God 35 bucks. That was hard. What do you mean I owe him? It's probably a strong term. You don't owe him anything. But it's your worship gift to him. You see, using giving as an example, and we'll get deeper into it later, there are a few of us here that can tell you God can take 90, 80% of your money, your income, and do more with it than you were when, when you were trying to keep it. I, I can't explain that. I don't, I, like I said, I don't, I don't even understand everything God asked me to do. Let me give you another truth to leave with this, this, this morning. The first one was choices create habits. Habits create character. And character will determine your destiny. Let me leave you with one last one. God will move no one who is satisfied where they are. 
Stop and think about that. God won't move anyone who is satisfied where they are. He'll call you, but he won't move you because he has to have uh, that connection with you of willingness to serve and willingness to go and willingness to move. Well, how old are you when God quits moving you around and dragging you through different things? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. If you got to a certain age and you, all of a sudden you think, well, I just can't, I mean, I'm, I'm right there. <laughs> you ain't. You're, you're not, and I'm not. We're not God's gift to the human race. I've been saved 41 years. 41. And yesterday I was sitting in there typing, thinking, I, I came across this truth I was reading, I came on the show, and I said, wow, I never thought of that. And I've been saved 41 years. You think I know everything. I did know everything when I was 30. How many of y'all can relate to that? I knew everything when I was 30. The older I get, the less I know, and the more questions I have, and that's just the way it is. We tend to put too much on God when it comes to our choices. And I mean that sincerely. Some of us say, well, if God wants me to change, he'll do blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Pardon me. If God wants me to change, then he'll just uh, somehow miraculously empty all the alcohol bottles in my house. Okay. If God wants me to change, then he'll, you know, fill in the blank. If you could be honest for just for a second, let's be honest right now. God wants you to change. There ain't a person in here that's right. And now what are you what is God waiting on? He's waiting on you. He's over here, got all the power, all everything you need to, to to help you through these life change changes. I don't read my Bible every day. Let me give you a tip. Just pick a time, and I'm just going to pull one out of the air, and this doesn't mean you have to do it. Say 6 o'clock in the morning. I think that's my wife's time, 6 o'clock in the morning. You get up, and you just make yourself get a cup of coffee. And I mean this sincerely. You make yourself go over there and sit down and read your Bible. And you do it.